Hola, buenos dias. Good morning. It's so good to see you. Thanks so much for stopping by and checking out the channel. It's your girl Daniela, the planner diva. And today I'm going to be sharing with you my sleep tracker um, that I keep in my happy planner and how I set it up and why I use it. So if you're interested in checking out um, why I track my sleep and how it benefits me, just keep on watching. So of course I'm in my leopard zip folio from the Happy Planner and I have my Happy Planner here. Let me pull her out. She's tucked into the back. Oh, okay. Come on. Out you come. Oh, she's stuck in there. All right, she's coming out. So this is my happy planner. Let me zoom in on her a bit. There we go. There we go. So this is my happy planner. I have her on metal expander discs because she is busting at the seams. I have a lot of different sections in my happy planner. I have 10 happy planners combined into this one Franken planner plus a bunch of other things inside of it. So she just she just she does get a bit chunky, but um one of the sections that i have in my happy planner is my sleep log and i have um i have that here um so i have it separated from my other sections with the super cute mini mouse dashboard and then we have my sleep uh, my sleep log which i don't necessarily have this section just for my sleep it's actually just you know my all like my catch-all of other things that aren't planners in here so besides the sleep stuff I have like daily productivity and journaling pages as well as just blank pages um, from various happy planner filler packs but I do have my um, my sleep log in here so right now it just is two pages um, but yeah let me let me tell you a little bit about my sleep log, my sleep section in my happy planner, and what I use it for, and why I use it, and why maybe you should give it a try. So, so the first page that I have here is my bedtime routine page, and this was just something I wanted to do to um, start building a routine for my sleep. I'm the type of person who doesn't like to sleep very much. I like to kind of cut my sleep short because I do like being awake and doing things. I have so many interests and hobbies and sometimes I feel like I don't have enough hours in the day so I try to tend to cut my sleep and you know um, sacrifice a little bit of sleep so I can get up or stay up and you know enjoy living my life. That being said, I am not a superhuman, so I don't necessarily do the best on, um, you know, a small amount of sleep. And so I have been really trying to make sure that I am not cheating myself of sleep and that if I am, you know, having um, nights where I'm sleeping less, that at least those, those, that sleep is of higher quality. And so for me, it was important to really, um, treat my sleep as sacred and to prepare myself to go into sleep um, and give myself the best chance that I have to have a good night of sleep. And so my little bedtime routine kind of is a reminder and a motivation for me to do all of that prep work um, so that I am able to have a great night of sleep. So this was very, very simple bedtime routine. I just kind of outline um, when I want to be um, getting into sleep. So on the weekdays, because I'm an early bird, I like getting up at five or earlier. I do want to be, um, you know, starting this routine about 15 to 30 minutes before I am getting into bed. So on weekdays, I try to sleep at 9 p.m. That doesn't always happen, of course, um, but my goal is to start this routine anywhere from 8.15 to 8.30, so giving me 45 to 30 minutes of, of being able to have my bedtime routine. 
on weekends of course that is a little I, I do let myself sleep in a little bit more and um, I'm able to stay up a little bit later so on weekends I really want to be starting my bedtime routine anywhere from 9 to 9 30 and then getting into bed an hour later than I try to usually around 10 p.m. sometimes I'm really good about this schedule and I am definitely in bed at 9 or at 10 um, sometimes I definitely have you know an hour even two hours shifted but those are my goals and I do try to live up to these goals but you know it's okay if I f if I end up shifting my bedtime my bedtime and my wake time a little bit and then um, yeah so here I just wrote when 30 to 45 minutes before my sleep goal and um, Although sometimes, you know, I could be running out of time and I this bedtime routine, I end up, you know, compacting into a 10 to 15 minute time period. So there are four things that, that I always have to do before I go to sleep. And these are um, my, my essential prep. And so I have those listed down here. And then I have a couple of things that depending on how much time I'm, I have, I... I'm able to do and those are the ones that kind of are kind of over here so the ones that I must do before I go to bed like these are non-negotiable um, these are the ones that I do if I have if I'm only able to do a 10 minute bedtime routine wash my face brush my teeth put on my pajamas and set my alarm and get into bed this is like the bare minimum bare bones if I have 10 to 5 minutes and before my bedtime and I just want to get into bed i don't want to do anything else these are the four things that i have to do and of course um no screen time so the the sooner i can cut off screen time digital time the the better and this is one of the most important things that i try to incorporate into my bedtime routine and, um, and that is so important because devices um have blue light in them and that really disturbs your sleep like it's been clinically shown that people who interact with devices sleep worse than people who don't before their bedtime so um by the way all of my sleep knowledge comes from a book called why we sleep um, I forget the name of the guy who wrote it, but he's like a big hotshot, you know, sleep scientist, and he really knows his stuff. And so um, I learned a lot reading that book, and it really inspired me to take better care of my sleep and um, give myself the best chance to live a happy life. And then just right here, um, I have a little habit tracker sticker that is supposed to be a monthly sticker but I kind of use it for just whenever I'm able to get a solid bedtime routine in I like to like color in one of the boxes to kind of like motivate me to um, to stick to my bedtime routine and then this section over here is just where I put in a couple of um, of more like if I have more time I'm able to do this then I'll try to do some of these more like intense bedtime routine rituals so making myself a cup of sleepy time tea that is one of the things that I do really enjoy doing for my sleep I have this wonderful um, Buddha tea that is for sleep it has valerian root in it if you have trouble sleeping or getting to sleep definitely try drinking some sleepy time tea with valerian in it because I find that incredibly relaxing even more so than drinking something with chamomile or lavender or any of these other calming um, herbs valerian root definitely um, works for me. I also like to light a candle or put on my essential oil diffuser for a little aromatherapy before I go to bed and this is definitely kind of all in that like calming, um, that the wind down process especially since my essential oil diffuser is um, I, I have a lavender blend in it so it's very much a calming and sleep inducing aromatherapy I wouldn't recommend doing like a citrus or even like a peppermint or something like that that is a little bit more energizing and invigorating I would definitely try to do something a little bit more calming if you're going to be doing aromatherapy or lighting a candle and then um, I have a little sticker here that says meditate um, to remind me that um, you know, if I'm able to do some deep breathing meditations, some calming meditation, then uh, that would be great. And this is something I do like to do 
uh, right when I get into bed, when I'm like closing my eyes and letting myself kind of relax, it's one of the easiest ways for me to get to sleep quickly. And um, yeah, actually I have gotten to the point where I do this pretty consistently because it just helps me so much to get to sleep. I'm the kind of person that has a restless, active, hyperactive mind. I'm always thinking, I'm always thinking of what I'm gonna do the next day. I'm always thinking about things that happened in the day. You know, my mind will just go on and on and on and on if I don't actively try to turn it down and silence it and just like, you know, just put it on resting mode. And this definitely helps me um, get to sleep. Also, um, I put a little uh, Rilakkuma bear. I forget the name of this, the, the girl bear, but um, I have this little bear here and I put do some bedtime yoga, which is something I used to do a couple months back. I got actually um, really good at incorporating a little bit of bedtime yoga into my bedtime ritual. I just haven't had time um, lately. My bedtime rituals have been more like 15 minutes at the most. I just look up a bedtime yoga on YouTube. Yoga with Adrienne is one of my favorite yoga channels and she has some really good bedtime routines that vary from like 10, 15, 20, even 30 minutes long of yoga that's meant to calm you down and it really, really, really helps um, to get you to sleep. Um, and I feel like the reason I'm not doing this either is because the meditation does help me get to sleep pretty pretty good so I feel like I don't really need to do bedtime yoga and then also if I have time I like to journal in my happy planner reflecting on and reviewing the day just filling in my happy planner it's one of the um, things that I love to do at the end of the day is to just kind of like flip through my happy planner and you know fill in anything that I need to fill in and just you know just flip through it and, and journal so that's all I have for my bedtime routine. It's really, really simple, and I'm definitely thinking it's time to update my this page here. So I might, um, I might do that soon and share that with you. And the last thing that I have here is just a couple of sentences, like journaling about why sleep is important to me. So I, I wrote here, I dedicate myself to establishing a healthy sleep routine for the benefit of my mental health and well-being. Sleep is restorative and healing. Dreams are essential and mystic sites of astral connection. To sleep, to dream, good for the mind and soul. So that was just a little um, written reflection I wrote down to uh, to motivate me to get a good night's sleep in. And really, sleep is so, so, so important and so, so, so essential. Like When I read that, that book, Why We Sleep, um, it really did change my life because it definitely showed me the amount of science and work people have done to study sleep and its restorative benefits and there's just so much evidence out there showing how getting a good night's of sleep is so beneficial in so many different ways it's good for your immune system it's good for your cognitive abilities it's good for your physical health and it's good for your emotional and mental health. And there's just um, just so much out there like showing how good sleep is that it's hard for me to ignore that <laughs> as a scientist. And again, like I said, I am the type of person that um, that likes to, likes to cheat sleep. I definitely like to cheat sleep as you'll probably see here in a bit. So um, I'm gonna zoom in. These are my sleep logs. And this was my first, um, my first sleep log that I had here in my happy planner. I've actually kept a sleep log for maybe a year now, but I just haven't had it be this intense. When I first started having a sleep log where I kept track of all my stats when it came to sleep, when I first started having it, I just would write my bedtime, my wake time, the total hours that I've slept, and my sleep score. And these are all things that I kept track of on my Fitbit. I have a Fitbit Versa 2 and it tells me how much I sleep, my sleep score, and uh, various other sleep statistics, which I love because I am a data scientist, so I love seeing the numbers. And so um, here I'll share with you this page first. So the first, uh, so, so this is the first time I tried doing a sleep blog that was a little bit more stats intense, and, um, and what I kept track for, for it was the date, obviously, uh, my bedtime, 
my wake time, the total sleep amount I slept, my sleep score according to my Fitbit, as well as my mood that I felt throughout the day, and I also kept track of my REM sleep, my light sleep, and my deep sleep. So um, sleep has different stages, and the Fitbit is able to keep track of how long you stay in each stage, and it's all dependent on like your blood pressure, which it measures because it's on your wrist, it's on your body, and so it's able to keep track of your sleep stages because our blood pressure changes throughout those sleep stages. And so um, there's three different types of sleep or three main types of sleep. And there's there's REM, which stands for rapid eye movement sleep. And this is the, um, the phase in sleep where you dream usually. And then you have light sleep, which is good for like restoring like cognitive strength and ability and deep sleep which is good for like physical restoration like your body's able to rest and all three of them are essential for your mental well-being and particularly deep sleep is is the type of sleep that you feel most rested from actually and so i always try to keep an eye on my deep sleep so those are the things that I kept track in the sleep log and as you can see there's times where I definitely did not um, write down the stats either because uh, well actually anytime I don't have the stats is because I did not wear my Fitbit to bed and sometimes that happens like I just don't feel like wearing my Fitbit every single day to bed and um, especially if like I'm sleeping with my boyfriend it just feels weird to like have it <laughs> always on so there's definitely days I don't know how much I've slept and that's totally fine. Usually on the week days is when I'm most concerned about my sleep and so on weekends I tend to not keep track of it as much. So that was my sleep log and so as you can see I definitely I definitely vary in how much I sleep and um my sleep score and when my bedtime and my wake time is like on May 31st, I woke up at 5.30, I slept 6 hours and 33 minutes. The next day, I woke up at 7.17, I slept 8 hours, 23 minutes. The day after, I woke up nearly at 8. That was definitely a late day for me. I slept 7 hours and 37 minutes. There were a couple of days I had no idea, you know, how much I slept. And then for the second, my second sleep log here, um, so these, this page, by the way, these are um, dot grid paper from the Happy Planner, and this is a blank example of what that looks like before I fill it up. And this came from a Mickey uh, Disney Mickey Mouse uh, paper pack with the cute Mickey and Minnie here. Super, super cute. And um, I really like how this log came out. Um, something that was kind of annoying me in this log was that I had the different stages of sleep all in one column and I just kind of separated them by slashes and I felt like that wasn't really working for me it just kind of looked a little bit messy so I ended up including like separate columns for those um, for that for those stages so right now what I have going on is the date I just abbreviated it with a D I have my sleep time so that's my bedtime and then I have my wake time so you know when I wake up and then my total sleep, and then I have my sleep score abbreviated with an S, and then I have my mood, which I abbreviated to an M, and I think I'm just gonna either draw like a happy face or an, like an okay face or a frowny face. Um, so I'm just gonna do a little emoji for my mood in this, uh, for this because um, I don't necessarily need to have like a whole word. Usually I've just been writing like good or great or groggy, um, so I, I'm just gonna go with the little emoji and that way I can kind of save on space here. And then I have the four stages of sleep that the Fitbit tells me. So I have the awake stage and actually people end up having a lot of awake time in their sleep because you know they wake up in the middle of the night, uh, maybe even several times. And sometimes we don't even remember waking up. So yeah, it's always interesting because it usually is like for me about like an hour of time and so when I sleep like what I think is seven hours, I'm actually sleeping only about six hours. 
and then we have the REM stage, the light, st the light sleep stage, and then the deep sleep stage. And then in my last column, I have a little uh, column for recording any like major themes from any dreams I've had. I definitely believe in the importance of dreaming and actually, and you know what's really, really interesting about dreams? It's that um, several, you know, sleep studies from different science laboratories have shown that uh, dreaming is actually um, really good for like mental anguish, like PTSD, um, trauma, things like that. People who tend to dream about whatever it, trauma that they endured and are able to like re-experience that in the dream state are have been shown to be less affected by you know that traumatic incident so you know soldiers who dream of their ptsd causing incident are um, less likely to have like a severe a more severe form of ptsd and so there's this hypothesis that being able to dream about whatever it is um, that has been you know really eating at you helps you kind of process it more so i just have a little dream column here where i just write a couple of keywords about things that I that I dreamt about and actually I'm gonna fill in this uh, this third row here with you so you can see me actually let's fill it in let me zoom in a bit so I'm filming on my phone right now and it has my Fitbit stats on it so I had to like write my Fitbit stats down real quick before I started filming so um yeah let's fill this in so today is june the 23rd and yesterday i went to sleep at 9 29 which in military time is 21 29 and then i woke up today at 5 32 which i'm very happy about because um, I ideally like to wake up around 5 and I've been slowly getting back into waking up at 5. There was a good amount of time where I was waking up anywhere from like 6.30 to like almost 8 and I just want to get back to waking up at 5 because for me that's my favorite time to get up. I can do so many things in the morning before I have to start my work and so yeah. so. 5 32 i woke up and then the total amount of time i slept was six hours and 58 minutes which i'm very happy about because that's about seven hours and seven hours is pretty good in my opinion i mean i think sleep science really recommends eight hours of sleep but um seven hours is definitely something that i feel like I can definitely work on and I feel okay with and fine on um, and I tend to sleep more on the weekend so on the weekdays having seven hours of sleep to me is fine and then for my sleep score I had an 85 and let's see and then oh I should probably fill in my mood so yesterday I felt good so let me happy face and then 618 when was that that was friday i think i don't remember yeah i don't remember no i felt good yeah friday i did feel good okay so happy face so mood usually i fill this out at the end of the day and then my time awake i spent an hour and five minutes awake and i definitely feel like that's a lot i did wake up in the middle of the night so i do think that that sounds reasonable to me um yesterday i only had 40 minutes or 39 minutes awake and i felt i slept so well and so i'm definitely trying to minimize the time i spend awake and then for my REM sleep, I slept an hour and 26 minutes, which is great. Um, that's about, that's exactly how much I slept on Friday. And yes, or, and yesterday I only slept 39 minutes in REM. And I do think REM is important. And so I'm glad that I kind of increased that. And then for light sleep, I slept four hours and two minutes 
and for deep sleep I slept one hour and 30 minutes and that is about how much I slept in deep sleep yesterday and yesterday I felt very rested and today I don't feel as rested as yesterday maybe because I have more I had more time awake I don't know but I definitely feel fine so I'm glad that I'm getting you know a good amount of deep sleep although I would like to increase this and then I did dream actually and I don't remember the details of my dream I think I was arguing with my boyfriend I'm gonna write that arguing with Steven I'm gonna put a question mark because I'm not absolutely certain that that's what I was doing and so that is my sleep um, my sleep schedule and I fill this out every morning and then I write my mood in at the end of the day and this really gives me an idea of um, how well I'm sleeping and how my sleep is directly impacting my mood let me know your thoughts in the comments down below I would love to know if you keep track of your sleep and if so um, how do you keep track of it? What do you like? Do you have any tips advice for keeping track of sleep? I also have a little dream journal that's about that big and I in there I write down You know my actual dreams and any details about my dreams Here in this column. I just kind of write like major themes of the dreams um, But a lot of times I just don't remember the dream very well to be able to write you know about it and so sometimes I'll just write down like the main kind of like main things that I do remember from my dreams here so yeah that is my sleep journal my sleep tracker and um, yeah I'm glad you could come check out this video and I'll catch you in my next video bye